Let's take a look at the number of lone pairs and bonding pairs in XEF2, xenon difluoride. So usually when we look at lone pairs and bonding pairs, we're only talking about the central atom. That's the one that affects the molecular geometry for the molecule. So for bonding pairs of electrons, we're looking at the bonds. These are the electron pairs between atoms. We have one pair here and another pair here. So we have two bonding pairs of electrons. The non-bonding pairs, the lone pairs, we have one, two, three. So we have three lone pairs of electrons for XEF2. You might note that xenon has more than eight electrons around it. That's okay, xenon's an exception. It can have an expanded octet. Let's look at the molecular geometry for a minute just to see how these lone pairs influence the shape of the molecule. So the purple, that's our central xenon atom. We'll add our two fluorine atoms, one, two. They spread out far as way as they can from each other. And then we add the lone pairs. Lone pairs, they occupy space and they'll repel each other and these atoms here. One forces everything down, two. And then finally, the last one, because of the symmetry here, we end up with a linear molecular geometry for XEF2 because of these three lone pairs. Let's go back. So to recap, we have one, two, three lone pairs for XEF2, and then we have two bonding pairs of electrons. This is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.